finely crafted and precisely tuned, the Buffalo Bills have put together football's deadliest arsenal. Notorious for his itchy trigger finger, Jim Kelly has plenty of live ammo with the game's best all-purpose weapon, Thurman Thomas, along with Andre Reed and James Lofton. The Bills' offensive firepower is among the best ever. While some of the critics have taken their shots at Buffalo's defense, it's still loaded with Pro Bowl stars who are coming on strong again. Led by the dominant Bruce Smith, the Bills can wrap up the home field throughout the playoffs tonight and can set their sights on the trophy that eluded them so narrowly a year ago. the best shape. A win tonight clinches home field advantage throughout the playoffs, something that has proven to be a tremendous postseason edge. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us. The Bills come in with their fourth straight AFC East title, and the offense has carried the load with stars like Kelly and Thomas and Lofton and Reed all trying to get back to another Super Bowl. The question, Joe Theismann, is, is their defense good enough right now to help them get back there? The key word is now, Mike. Yes, they are. Their defense is good enough now. They got Jeff Wright back after missing seven games. They got Bruce Smith back after missing 11. Just to give you an idea how important Bruce Smith is to that defense, before, when he was out, they were giving up almost 21 points a game. With Bruce Smith back, they're giving up only 17 points a game. They are much improved, and it's allowed Cornelius Bennett to go back and do the things that he does best wreak havoc on an offense. The Colts fired Ron Meyer after a terrible start, but it hasn't gotten much better under Rick Venturi. And one of the reasons, 16 players on injured reserve, 12 of them on offense. No wonder they're averaging an all-time low 9.5 points a game. Well, if you, if you do want to take a look at statistics, besides the 9.5 points a game, you take a look at the beating Jeff George has taken. 27 games in two years, 86 sacks. There's no question that Jeff George is the man on this football team that's going to have to make it happen. He's tough. He's proved that by taking as many sacks as he has. He also has a great arm, so he has the athletic ability. But the one thing that he's going to have to work on is his dedication to understanding the position of being a quarterback. He hasn't learned that yet. But if this franchise, the Colt franchise, is going to go anywhere, it's going to be with Jeff George as the man. Where it goes and how soon it goes is going to be up to his development. Rick Venturi, the longtime assistant and defensive coordinator, elevated to the head coaching spot this year. He wants to keep the job, but he may not get the chance. And Marv Levy, with 55 wins and four consecutive AFC East titles to his credit, trying to prime his club for another run at the Super Bowl. If I were him, I'd smile, too. Teams met earlier in the year, and it was a walkover for the Buffalo Bills. They scored the first six times. They touched the football, had 276 yards rushing, and won it going away 42-6, a game with liberal substitutions by the coaching staff. Eric Dickerson will not play tonight. He has the flu, and that is one of the reasons, one of the things that has hit Venturi and his ball club all year long injuries, illness, what have you, the unavailability of players. Yeah, but the unavailability of Eric Dickerson, I think, puts a lot of questions, as we'll talk about through the night. But the thing is, is the one football team that this team has won this year was won right after Eric Dickerson was put on suspension when they did beat the Jets 28-27. So you just don't know how it affects a ball club. Eric has, has not really been happy here. There's been a lot of question about his future here. Um, there's a, The whole franchise is just... 
riddled with question marks all over the place. He has certainly been a distraction, if nothing else. Well, I think he was a distraction when he came back. He made some statements. His teammates took it very personal. And uh, quite frankly, I think that this football team will play better without Eric Dickerson. Buffalo will get their hands on the ball for the first time. Edwards and Kenneth Davis going deep. Edwards returned one, a big touchdown return last week against the Raiders, 91 yards, when the Raiders were pounding the Bills, got them back into the game, and of course, they came back with a tremendous rush at the close of the game to win. Okay, I want you to take a breath now. Okay, okay. I want you to take a breath now because the Bills are going to get the ball. We will no have no time, and you at home, everybody, take a deep <laughs> breath because you're about to watch Loyola Marymount of the professional football ranks go to work on offense. Dean Biasucci to kick it away. Davis and Edwards wait at the four-yard line. And 52,000 on hand for a team that has won only one game all year. Davis, six yards deep. He'll down it there. Take a look at the McLean Deluxe starting lineups. Jim Kelly having a wonderful year for the Bills. Club record for completions, yards, and touchdowns. He's ranked number one in the AFC. Thurman Thomas, the most dangerous back in football. He leads the NFL in rushing coming into the weekend and catches by a running back. Up front, Will Wolford has been their most consistent lineman, made the Pro Bowl for the first time last year. There are so many weapons on this team. Al Edwards, the third wide receiver in the opening set. Thurman. Five yards. Take a look at the Indianapolis defense. They'll go with a 4-2-5 against the Bills. John Hand has never lived up to his number one draft selection, but is consistent and plays the run well. Jeff Harad leads the team in tackles for the third straight year, plays every down, a rarity for an inside linebacker. And injuries have limited the playing time of free safety Mike Pryor. The Colts need him to make big plays. Thurman cuts it outside. First down and more gets out to the 36-yard line. And Pryor made the tackle. The Colts have decided that the way they want to try and attack this hurry-up offense of the Buffalo Bills is to play with two down linemen, two outside linebackers, treating them as down linemen, and playing with five defensive backs, similar to what the Giants did to the Bills in the Super Bowl. Something of a difference in personnel, however, and Thomas for the third straight time up to the 40-yard line. Jeff Harad, the leading tackler out of Mississippi, makes the tackle. You know, that offense places so much pressure on a defense because do you want to commit very similar, you know, you talk about the box between the tackles. Do you want to commit players there or do you want to play back and play pass defense? Kelly with a half roll in his first pass. Andre Reed, who is so great after the catch, out of bounds just into Indianapolis territory. It has the run and shoot mentality to it keeping the other defense making them keep the same personnel on the field and allowing the quarterback to find the soft spot what they they seek mike is matchups you want to, what you do is you get a series and you get a chance to see how people are going to play it defensively has uh it's not been an area for the colts that they have been woeful this year offensively they've really broken down thurman thomas for about five more down to the 44 yard line Quintus McDonald out of Penn State made the stop. The Thomas Arctic. already four, four catches or four rushes, 26 yards. Ted Marcherbroda, the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills, sort of keeps his ball rolling. Thomas again, this time hit in the backfield by Chip Banks, the nine-year veteran. Doesn't take him long to get off a play, does it? No, as a matter of fact, we went. Remember now, the, the play clock starts at 45 seconds. A lot of teams usually snap it down around 10 or 15. Kelly out of the shotgun, incomplete. Flag is down. Interference called on John Baylor, the strong safety. What's so amazing about the speed of the Buffalo Bills offense when they get up and run a play is you have to remember the 45-second clock starts from the time the ball is marked for play. Now, receivers could be down the field. Defense, number 36, first down. There it is, number 36, Baylor and Andre Reed. Just lock them up. <laughs> yeah, that's he what, got him. That's what's known as being in your shirt. 
The Bills racing along on their opening possession. And around, Andre Reed. 30, 23. Big shot there, but it's another first down. Pryor hit him, along with Jeff Harad. Gain of 16. Well, you run Thurman, you run Thurman, you run Thurman. Now watch the right side of your screen. See the defense react? All the, all the tackle has to do, Ken Hull, actually he's the center pulling out, is just shield the linebacker, and Reed makes the turn. It's 11 times this year that Andre Reed has run the football, and he's been quite successful with it. Al Edwards with a good downfield block, and another first down. Thurman Thomas dances off the right side, cuts it back. 13-yard line, very close to another first down. Harad again makes the tackle. This is where I think the Colts can slow down that offense because they don't have as much field to defend. They can now commit some more people to the line of scrimmage to try and slow down Thurman. And Thurman took a shot on the last play and is down. He started the weekend as the leading ground gainer in the NFL with 1,373 yards. Sanders and Emmett Smith both passed him today but he only needs 68 yards to get it back. He might get 68 on the opening uh, possession. As he cuts up field, he makes the move. And you'll see him, he gets hit right in the knee. Gets bent over a little bit. Gets nailed in the back. I mean, you can almost pick the spots that people hit him. Harad comes in from one side. Mike Pryor comes in. Of course, Marv Levy, very concerned. He wants to get the home field advantage, but he doesn't want anyone hurt going into the playoffs. And the offensive line of the Buffalo Bills wants to get Thurman Thomas the rushing title. He's made a deal with them. If he gets it, if he gets that title, they, the offensive linemen get a bonus. And, of course, we're looking at a matchup next week where the Detroit Lions with Barry Sanders go up to Buffalo to play. He's also considered making a deal with the defensive guys, <laughs> saying, listen, if you do a good enough job on Barry, I may include you in the bonus package. Last year, of course, he came up eight yards short of Barry Sanders for the rushing title because he was taken out of the final game of the year, and at least he's sitting up. And here's what he has been able to help this team do in the last two years. A sparkling record. He's touched the ball either on handoffs or catching it 23 times on an average of a game. 16 times over 100 yards rushing, 29 touchdowns. I mean, he is just a tremendous impact player, the best all-around back in the game. I think he is the most valuable player in the National Football League. Walking very slowly off the field, we will update you on his condition as soon as possible. Already with 34 yards, half of what he needed to be number one again in the rushing area. And, of course, he's gone over 2,000 all-purpose yards this year, which makes him number one yards from scrimmage. The Bills lead the NFL with uh, drives over, touchdown drives over 80 yards. They have 18 of them. Kenneth Davis, that's Ralph Wilson, the Bills runner. Kenneth Davis, number 23, checks in. He gained 100 yards against his team in the first meet. Kelly throws Lofton to the one. Well, have they done anything wrong so far? It's absolutely unbelievable the confidence that Jim Kelly has. He drops back, looks to the right, then turns at the last minute, throws the ball to a spot, and James Lofton is there. Lofton trails only Steve Largen in receiving yards career, and inside the 20, the Bills have been absolutely spectacular. In fact, they've been absolutely spectacular outside the 20, but they get in there all the time, and when they do, they score. First and goal here. Harwell Gardner. And no touchdown signal stops short. That is a psychological lift for the Colts. They, they finally have stopped them a little bit. They try and run a little trap up the middle. Radisek fills. Big hit, Harad fills. The two linebackers come in and squeeze the middle. McKellar come in to try and get the trap block. It won't happen. Buffalo actually huddled up this time. So second and goal. Davis. Touchdown. Davis. 
So Buffalo takes five minutes and four seconds off the clock on its opening possession, drives 80 yards, and scores. Run it the same place, right up the middle. I mean, you, you've got your all pros there. You've got Ken Hall at center, Richter at left guard. Of course, Glenn Parks at right, bar, right uh, guard, and they just make a little bit of a hole. Kenneth Davis with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And Scott Norwood, who got a vote of confidence this week from his coach, Marv Levy. He is his kicker. Will go for the point after. Struggled a week ago before hitting the game winner in overtime, but converts the point after. Opening possession. The Bills have scored and lead by a touch. A luxury car says a lot about its owner. Mine says I'm witty beyond belief. Mine says I'm more Europeanish. Mine says I'm the product of superior genes. A luxury car says... I'm so successful I can go into debt. I'm much more handsome. Cosmopolitan. Another pathetic sheep following the herd. Says a lot. I'm irresistible. Powerful. Styly. Sexy. Dynamic. The all-wheel drive Subaru legacy. All it says is that you bought a great car and you can still pay your mortgage. These 91s are here to remind you McDonald's McLean Deluxe is 91% fat free. No, we're not. But you're all 91s. Brain surgeon? Not. <laughs> we're here because McLean Deluxe is 100% delicious. With the Diet Coke, it even satisfies Big Jeff Wright. Right, right? Right. Right, right. It's 100% delicious. So why 91s? And then again, why not? <laughs> the unforgettable taste of McLean Deluxe at McDonald's today. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. Clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive by McDonald's, getting more for your money. That's McDonald's today. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Buffalo, as is their want, opens in a hurry. 7-0, 9.56 to go first quarter. And a beautiful drive. They take the opening kickoff from their own 20-yard line and march 80 yards in 5.04, running and passing, both very effectively. Remember, the first time these teams met, the Bills scored on their first six possessions. And this is Brad Daloiso, who does the kickoff duty, kicking to Clarence Fernand and Sammy Martin. Martin, eight yards deep, he'll keep it there, and the Colts will start from their own 20-yard line. Colts offense is dead last in the NFL, but strong arm Jeff George is their future this year. Ten touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Bill Brooks has been his favorite target. He needs only eight catches to pass Lenny Moore for number two on the team's all-time list. And one of the major concerns is a line destroyed by injuries. Kevin Call has been the only man in his spot to start each game. Clark and Manoa will start in the backfield with the absence of Eric Dickerson. He's been absent a lot this year. Tonight because of the flu, earlier because he was suspended. Manoa the up man. Clark out of Nebraska, deep in the eye. And George to throw on first down, out to Clark. No game. Nice job coming up from the secondary, Leonard Smith. Buffalo defense, Bruce Smith is back and disrupting people again. Last season's defensive player of the year, 78 sacks and 75 career games. A great set of linebackers with Shane Conlon, the leading tackler. Three of the four pro bowlers, Conlon three times. Nate Odoms is a Pro Bowl level corner who gets the most respect from passers who try not to throw where he is. And there is Bruce. He's not 100% yet. But Bruce Smith at 80% is pretty good. George on the delay. Clark picks up about nine, and there will be a face mask on top of it. Daryl Talley made the stop. It looks like Tally may have also been the guilty party. I like what the Colts are doing, though, Mike. They're spreading them out. I mean, they're really giving the Buffalo Bills a little bit of a dose of their own medicine. That means face mask, by the way. That...
Personal Watch foul. the left part of your screen. And that looks like a 15-yarder, and it will be. As Callie grabbed hold and hung on. He was so thrilled last year when he was sent to the Pro Bowl by Art Shell. Each coach can name one player, and Tally said he was very proud of that. He said it was more gratifying to be picked by him because there could have been 750 other guys that could have gone. And normally head coaches will pick a player from their own team, too. First down, Colts, the 44. Clark cuts it to the outside, chased by Pink. Out of bounds, but got about eight. The update on Thurman Thomas is an injured ankle, a sprain, and unsure whether he will come back in the ballgame. You know he wants to. He's not only chasing uh, the NFL rushing leadership, but he is chasing Marcus Allen's all-time record in yards from scrimmage. Yeah, but you know the coaches know that he's. they're also chasing a world championship. Yeah. They want him available for the playoffs. They're already there. They don't want to hurt anything going in. Second and two for the Colts. Movement in the Colts backfield and Clark dropped another flag goes down Carlton Bailey looks like he had a hand up around the face mask we will check it now, that won't happen it'll be a legal motion by the Colts there's no foul in the play the back that moved reset he was the only man moving second down he has to reset for a full second, second. yeah exactly and here's Venturi signaling the face mask because it looked like Bailey had gotten it at the end of the play. You know, you really have to admire the job Rick Venturi and his staff has done. When Ron Myers was fired, Leon Burnett went also, who was the offensive coordinator, and they have not replaced those two guys on the staff. So really, here's a, here's a guy who's trying to coach against probably the most potent team in football with only six coaches. I mean, that, that to me is a job. That, there's just so much work that these guys have to try and do, and there aren't enough hours in a day. Exactly. Third and three because the play stands. Bill showing blitz. Here they come. George unloads, but threw it behind Clarence Verdan. And Jeff George got nailed again. Jeff George could have had just one more second. Top right of your screen. See him go right through the seam now. Set and fire. Do the best you can. And he has taken his share of hits. We talked about 86 sacks in 27 games. That doesn't count. We don't, you don't even know the amount of hits. That's right. I mean, that's hundreds. Maybe thousands. <laughs> Ron starts to kick to Clifford Hicks, who waits at his 11-yard line. been hit as many times in two years as he did in your entire career. Beautiful kick by Stark. And the Colts trying to down inside the five, and it looks like they did it. Great hustle, a 45-yard punt, and a great job on special teams for the Baltimore, or I said it, the Baltimore Colts, the Indianapolis Colts, back in a minute. cardboard and cotton. Yet no other headgear comes more strongly recommended by the NFL. There are a hundred reasons why college football fans will enjoy these two ESPN home videos. But for the sake of time, here's five of them. It's a two-fisted top-ranked doubleheader. Buck Smith, who has more wins than anyone in the fight game today, faces Robert Wagila, and Rudy Zavala battles Tommy Valdez. 
Top Rank Boxing, Thursday night, live on ESPN. Buffalo leads by a touchdown and a great play by Alan Grant on the punt. It really was. Now, the thing is, is when the receiving team is back and the guy that's re returning the punt does not try and make a play on the ball, the team that kicked it, a player can actually try and field it, which he does. But look at him. Look at the concentration. Then he has the presence of mind to knock the ball back into the field of play. He could have caught that and stopped, and it would have been down there, but he still has great presence. That's an excellent special teams play. Great hustle. A lot of times when you're overmatched offensively and defensively, you can make up for it in the special teams area. Kenneth Davis, the setback for the bill. He'll get the call. And gets about a yard. Gang tackle Jeff Harad, the first man to get there. The reason the Colts want to use the two down linemen, four linebacker concept and keep the linebackers down is they feel like they can get good balance both against the pass and the run. Now, in the first drive, you wouldn't really know that. Uh, George Catalopoulos. There's George. In the first drive, it was the Bills with the bounce. Andre Reed, between two defenders out to the 30, Chris Good had to make the stop, a gain of 26. Well, These guys are scary. It, it's All this is is a seam route. You spread them out, you run them straight up the field, he looks in, there's the ball. That's a great throw. Oh. Oh, what timing. If it's a little bit behind, it's knocked down. Got a put down first. Kenneth Davis. Stops at the line of scrimmage. And Mel Agee, number 90, wanted a, a hold on that play. Jeff Harrod made another tackle. Harrod's going to be worn out by halftime. Thurman Thomas, out of this game, has been a big, I think, a big lift to the Indianapolis Colt defense. Second and ten. Kelly looks one way, throws the other. Complete for about eight yards. Got it to Al Edwards. And he's done a fine job for coming in for Don Beebe, who was having a brilliant year when he was injured. Beebe, they expect back for the playoffs. But Edwards has stepped in, and they haven't missed much. Third, about two. Movement up front, and Davis trying to get the first down. He'll be close. The flag is down late. Looked like the Colts may have jumped. We'll see if they were drawn. And John Baylor up from a strong safety spot in on the stop to first man. Colts were offsides, and this would be a first down for Buffalo. Offside. Defense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. First down. 78, John Hand, the former number one draft choice in 1986 out of Alabama. And number one draft choices have not been this organization's forte. They have had some outstanding picks and come up with several busts. One of the reasons they have won a single game this year. Davis turns the corner, got a good downfield block from Edwards and may have another first down. And there's a flag down at the end of the play. Chris Good, the first man to run him out of bounds. You know, Indianapolis is trying so hard. I mean, you got him on a string if you're a quarterback. They're trying to grab everything and anything they can to bring him down. That was a face mask penalty. Face mask, five yards, defense, number 37. Well, he tried to grab something. He's, I'll tell you what he's like. He's lucky he didn't get 15. You because it was there an awful long time. Well, the Bills have run three plays that have not gotten anything. The rest have been extremely successful. Bills on first down. Five times out of nine, they've gained more than four yards. And that really puts the other team in the hole. Davis. Great cut. Down to the 30, down to the 29. It will be another first down. They ought to make the Bills play on grass, and other teams can play on turf. I mean, Thurman Thomas, Kenneth Davis, they cut on dimes. Give you a change. Well, this is surgery so far. Another end around the ring. 
split two tackles, picked up about five yards. Even when the play doesn't look good, they get five or six. And they just keep coming at you. Thurman with a little smile on the sideline without the best all-around back in football. Elijah Pitts right next to him. Went out, Elijah went out and looked at 15 bats before they settled on drafting Thurman. Pretty good choice, I'd say. Yeah. Elijah should get a bonus. He's a pretty good running back. Davis, another first down and more to the 15 running hard to about the 13-yard line. Game tackle there. What a job Will Wolford, the left tackle, did. Holy mackerel. Watch this, number 69 takes Mel Agee out like for dinner and lunch. <laughs> he barely gets back before David hits the ground. Another first down Buffalo from the Indy 13. Davis runs into trouble this time. John Hand has him. Boy, and this is a quiet 52,000 people. They have seen this happen all year. That's a great signal. We are clawing for any. Rick saying, claw at anything. I don't care. Just claw at anything. The best in the NFL are the Bills. Lofton, touchdown. This has the unmistakable look of practice. It's almost like what one, we call it seven on seven. That's when you just line up without pass rush. That time they tried to blitz outside receiver James Lofton. Little hard inside move on Chris Good, and that's it. Did what he could to try and knock the ball away, but it wasn't enough. Lofton closing in on 700 career catches. He would only be the fourth player ever to have that many. Norwood with a point after. And the Bills have executed two marvelous drives and lead it 14-0. With more power than standard cordless screwdrivers and 40 inch pounds of torque, the Black & Decker Power Driver is more than a match for any job. The Black & Decker Power Driver, one power tool that really pulls its own weight and then some. Imagine being born with the ability to meet any challenge expertly. That's the wonder of the Maxim XI from Minolta. With the experience of professionals programmed right in, it responds to any change of speed, or light, or distance automatically. For ultimate performance, the multi-talented Maxim XI, born experienced, only. Making a sports car, it seems mandatory to mention how fast it can go. Instead, why not mention the things you shouldn't mention about a sports car? A strong weld, over 24 safety features, all-wheel drive, engineering that endures. Still, if it's speed you want, we promise, with the Subaru SVX, you'll be able to use most of the speedometer. Subaru. What to drive. The quick finish power sander from Black & Decker. To do as much as easily, your hand would have to move at 15,000 strokes per minute and be equipped with a handy on-off switch. The quick finish power sander, a powerful gift idea from Black & Decker. The Los Angeles Rams, Jim Everett, hungry to fire up his troops. The Seattle Seahawks, ready for this Wild West shootout. Big Al, next Sunday. It's Sunday night, Big Al, ESPN. First period, Bills by 14. A lot of times you, you hear people refer to a quarterback looking at the defense. On this one, Jim Kelly's looking at that safety right there. Now, when the ball is snapped, he looks at the safety, sees it's man-to-man -man coverage, knows he has one-on-one -on -one with Lofton. Now, watch his eyes. Watch where he's focusing. He's looking right at the safety. He knows right now he's got one-on-one. -on -one. Now he doesn't have to look anybody off. He can focus right on Lofton, make the throw, six points. That's what a quarterback is reading when you talk about reading the defense. Galloiso, one of the better kickoff men in the NFL, tied for the fifth with touchbacks. And has a chance to get another one here. The Colts will take it at the 20-yard line. 
14-0. Buffalo running over Indianapolis. He stuck our racing's all-time winner. He stuck car racing's all-time most popular driver. He's the king, Richard Petty. In this new ESPN home video, The Ride of a Lifetime, Richard Petty and STP, you'll have the chance to come along with me, Dr. Jerry Punch, for a personal visit to Richard's home, and we'll show you classic video footage of Richard's greatest moments. To get your copy, call 1-800-342-3400. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. The information you know you should know is in the Wall Street Journal's video guide to money and markets. This exclusive 30-minute video is free. When you call for 13 weeks of the journal for just $37, that's over 20% off the newsstand price. Call toll-free 800-832-8700 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-832-8700. Sunday night. It's been a tough weekend. Yeah, it's not easy bringing home the b, -b bacon Especially when you could be the bacon. So what's on TV? How about some Sunday night NFL on ESPN? Yeah, let's watch them toss around the old pigskin. Don't, Don't say, say pigskin. Pig Sunday night NFL on ESPN. Hey, boys, let's pig out. Miracle, let's pig out ESPN. Mmm, want some pork rinds? Oh, Dad. Buffalo after two possessions leading Indianapolis 14 to nothing and the Colts quarterback Jeff George one of their prized possessions at this point in the uh, franchise and the quarterback drafted with the number one pick since 70 he is the only one to have more touchdown passes than interceptions over Aikman, Testaverde and Elway but look at the number of sacks 86 here are the other number one picks 86 sacks say he's held up when you think of about, for example, Jim Plunkett, who's up there now, he came out of New England completely physically beat up. Now, hopefully this kid can be able to go a little bit further than that and be a little more healthy when they get a team around. First and 10 Colts, who really need to get something stuck. And Clark will get the carry in the round. Forget, Bruce is there for a nine-yard loss. Yes, folks, he is 80% physically. He'll still make the Pro Bowl at 80%. He is something. Missed 11 games. Let him just come off the ball. And there they go. I mean, he's supposed to follow the lineman. Oh, with and, one hand. I mean, what you do is you go up to uh, Daryl Huffman and you say, hey, look, Darvell, try and get a little deeper on the reverse next time, will you? And Darvell's going to say, don't call that one again, will you? So now second and 18, officially a loss of eight. Wright and Smith's return on the defensive line will make a world of difference in this team. Quick pass, complete. They get back near the original line of scrimmage as they hit Huffman. Nate Odoms made the stop. Jeff George, in my opinion, has a wealth of talent. He throws the ball as well as anybody in the game. I don't think he's learned how to play the position of quarterback yet. It's more than just stepping up and taking a snap from center. It's the study habits. It's the hard work that goes into it. Even when your team's 1-13, and 13, that's when you start to make strides in that area. Third and 11. George under pressure. A little shovel pass. But it doesn't work as the Bills really come back on defense. Oldham's up from the corner, and then Bruce Smith recovered to make the stop. A well-designed play, but an excellent defensive reaction. I think if he had cut back inside and stayed with his blockers, he might have been able to pick up the first down. He just thought he saw daylight outside. He can't ever criticize a running back for running at daylight, but there wasn't any. No. Ron Stark to kick to Clifford Hicks, who waits at the 30. Another good kick by Stark. Hit from the 28 makes the first man miss. Got a seam. Hit to the 17 yard line. A 49 yard punt and a return of 55. 
Keith Taylor made the saving tackle. A lot of times you call out kicking your coverage, makes the first man miss. Now he gets to the wall, cuts up inside. He start trying to do what he can to steer him somewhere. Well, that's a heck of a job by Alan Grant just to get his feet to slow him down. He had a 59-yarder last week against the Raiders. That was the longest punt return that didn't go for a touchdown in the team's history. Kelly over the middle and dropped by Andre Reed. You will not see that one very often. Oh, and he knew he had it, too. Kelly right on target. That time, the, the touchdown pass to Lofton, they tried to blitz him. This time, what they did is they went back to double coverage, covered the outside people. Kelly knew he had Reed going down the middle, but the linebacker just does get his fingers on it. Quentin McDonald. Flexion may have been enough. Davis, not much. Stopped at the 15-yard line. Scott Radisek, number 97, was in on the stop. He's out of Penn State. Missed three games this year with a strained cap. Third and seven for the Bills, and the hurry up still in action. Kelly over the middle, touchdown, Kenneth Davis. <laughs> and Rick Venturi has seen this before. So Davis now with a rushing and a receiving touchdown. Jim Kelly looking over the entire defense. Puts a nice tight spiral right where it's supposed to. That's a great throw. He couldn't get it to read down the pipe before, so that time he went to the running back. Norwood for the point after. He's been perfect on three tries. Norwood may be leg weary already. 16 seconds to go in the quarter, and it's 21-0. The machine from upstate New York is running on all cylinders. Jim Kelly back in the shotgun. Right hand part of your screen. You'll see Kenneth Davis just circle around behind the linebacker. He's matched up on Scott Radizek and it's, it's just no contest. I mean, that's really what you look for, is you really look for matchup with a linebacker and a running back. And that's what Ted Marchabrota tries to preach there. Now, see, even Daryl Talley's come over and said something. He's a defensive guy. Hope you join us next Saturday because the NFL will be in action then, and so will we with a special edition of game day on Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Then on Sunday, a regular schedule, game day back at noon, prime time at 7, and then at 8 o'clock, Joe and I will be in the Kingdom in Seattle, the Rams and the Seahawks. Two teams that have had troubled seasons and wondering about the future of their respective coaching staff. And we'll be there to check that out. And we will have a special treat for you tonight. Walter Payton, Sweetness, the great Chicago Bear running back. And hopefully for him, a future NFL owner will be joining us live in the third quarter. Clarence Ferdinand and Sammy Martin waiting at the goal line for Dalloweso. Another touchback. Jim Ursay, the son of the owner, the general manager and vice president of this ball club. He will have uh, a lot of decisions to make this year. One on the coaching staff. They should have the top two draft choices in the draft coming up this year. And it's tough to go wrong with the top two, isn't it? Well, it is also. And you talk about Rick Venturi, their coach. They have said that he will be a part of the organization, but the decision hasn't been made whether or not he'll be the head coach. The Colts have a total of 19 yards in offense so far. Buffalo, 177. George to throw. Over the middle. Complete to Jesse Hester. 
Hester with a couple of good moves, crosses the 45 to about the 46 yard line. A gain of 26. That is the end of the first period of play. Except for that one play, it's been all Buffalo, 21 nothing. My wife sent me to Payless for some shoes. I didn't even know Payless had men's shoes. Well, right away I like the place because there's no sales people breathing down your neck. And they got all the shoes out. So you don't have to keep saying, you got this in a 10, have you got this in a 10? For once, I get a pair of shoes I like with no hassle. You ought to call it painless. <laughs> Hurry into Payless and find these men's shoes on sale starting at just $12.99 for shoe shopping that's painless. <laughs> Who'd have guessed? Payless. A luxury car says a lot about its owner. Mine says I'm witty beyond belief. Mine says I'm more Europeanish. Mine says I'm the product of superior genes. A luxury car says... I'm so successful I can go into debt. I'm much more handsome. Cosmopolitan. Another pathetic sheep following the herd. Says a lot. I'm irresistible. Powerful. Styly. Sexy. Dynamic. The all-wheel drive Subaru legacy. All it says is that you bought a great car and you can still pay your mortgage. Pool is like life. How so? I don't know. I just remember a guy said that to me once, and I never asked him what he meant. Why not? Well, you know, I didn't want to sound stupid. Saving it up, huh? <laughs> Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann back with you from Indianapolis. Thurman Thomas injured early in the ballgame with a sprained ankle. Could return. He would like to because he is chasing a couple of records this year. But knowing Marv Levy and how he likes to hold out injured players and be sure about the playoff, I don't expect to see Thurman Thomas. Why? Why would he put him back in the game? No, I don't. Thurman Thomas is done for the night. I think we can pretty well rest assured. Next week, it's going to be a matchup between Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas for the rushing title in this. The thing is, the Colts just got their first big play. Now, I'm going to go out on the limb, folks. Don't go away. Last, hey, we told you last week, it was down 20 to 3. There's still a chance. Still a chance out there. Only if Santa Claus shows up in a Colts <laughs> uniform. Ken Clark, the single setback. Nice hole up the middle, and he goes down to the Buffalo 45 yard line. This is the 10th different offensive line that the Colts have had to start this year. And Irv Pankey comes off injured reserve after 11 weeks, and guess who he gets to face in his first game back? Bruce Smith. And but you, Pankey is a quality player. He is. I mean, but, he, you know, he's, he's had his length of time. I mean, it's not like he's a young pup out there, and he has to use the guile that he's learned while he's with the Rams to try and block Smith. George with time over the middle, complete to Clarence Verdan. And Clarence Verdan down to the 17 yard line, gain at 28. Mark Kelso was in on the stop along with Nate Odom. You know, a lot of times when you've been sacked as many times as Jeff George has, you have a tendency to be a little gun shy. But when you got a guy on the left side like Irv Panky, Smith tries to take the big road upstream, can't get it. George does a nice job of stepping up in the pocket. He's got a great gun. I mean, that ball just flies by the defense. The Bills, of course, have been vulnerable on defense right this year without Bruce Smith, without Jeff Wright. Take away two-thirds of your defensive line, and especially with the quality of those players, and you will be vulnerable. Clark, back to the offensive line for the Colts for a second. The worst deal they made was picking up Bubba Paris because Bubba Paris on one play wiped out their two best offensive linemen Ray Donaldson broke a leg, and Panky got an Achilles heel out of it. And then they cut Bubba. Bill Muir, the offensive line coach, I mean, he should really have one of those bags on his side, like those mash units, trying to hold everybody together. Talk about earning your keep. They had five guys who could stand up last week. Pat Beach, the tight end, would have been an offensive lineman had anyone else been hurt. Second and nine here. George quickly over the middle. It's complete. Down to the 10-yard line. 
Bill Brooks quietly having an outstanding career with this team. Only needs eight catches, now seven to pass Lenny Moore. Saw what happened to Jerry Ball a couple weeks ago on the chop block. Bruce Smith got it last week a little bit against the Raiders. This is a pass. But you know the difference there? Is that's not a chop because Panky did not have him engaged. Smith had an opportunity to take Clark on one-on-one, -on -one, and that's the distinction that I think they're going to have to clarify. Here's Clark cuts inside 10, down to about the six-yard line. Mike Lodish, the nose man, made the tackle. The other thing, talking to Bruce Smith and Daryl Talley, uh, I think like other defensive players around the league, if the league does not do something, they are ready to do something. And I, the, the league is going to get a lot more people hurt and they have to really you're absolutely right mike they have to make that rule uniform both on runs and passes and it's very easy to tell whether it's flagrant or not or whether it jeopardizes a player's career got to be stronger legislation first and goal for the colts they have been impressive on this drive they need it now 21 nothing Cornerback blitz by Kirby Jackson. And George never saw him. A lot, you know what you'd say? People would probably say, oh, well, the offensive line. Uh-uh. That's a sack that he got. You can't keep backing up. You got to set yourself in a pocket. You got to give the line a chance. Number 47, he's got to set. Now set. See, the pocket's up there. You got to step up. What he did is he got out beyond the pocket, and he paid the price for it. You can't blame the offensive line for that. That's one that Jeff's got to take on his shoulder. So now it's second and goal from the 14-yard line. 87 sacks in 28 games. He would love to have any test of verdict protection. Quick throw this time. Almost picked off. Intended for Verdan. And Odom's got his hands on it. I was talking about on the play before. Now, that time you saw him set. As he goes back in the pocket, we stop it right there. Stop it. You see, there's a pocket. He's got a place to step up in. It's a three-step drop. Now he'll continue to go back here, and the corner will come around on the outside. See, you, you've got it. You, the object is to have him be tough up front and give you a place to step up into. Go to the shotgun on third and goal from the 14. Chased out of the pocket, Cornelius Bennett had him and lost it. Loops it to Clark. Clark to the five. Great presence of mind there by George under tremendous pressure. Little shovel pass. The mother of invention. How about this? Now, he doesn't, he doesn't, now he's almost out of field goal range. Does a nice job of moving. He says, oh, I can't get there. Here, you take it. Yeah, the Colts are giving the fans something to cheer about. They're going to go for it on fourth down. I mean, you're down 21 zip. Heaven forbid. Uh-oh. Now they've sent Ron Stark onto the field. He's the field goal kicker. Rick Venturi wants a timeout. If he goes for the field goal down 21 nothing to Buffalo, this crowd may get up and leave. Back in a minute. If you're trying to decide between a roomy Isuzu trooper with incredible cargo space and the roomy Isuzu Rodeo with incredible passenger space. Take your time. After all, at these prices, you can afford to be choosy. Isuzu, there's no comparison. Hurry, your end factory to dealer incentives end December 31st. This royal throne of kings this happy breed of men, this earth of majesty, this little world. The airline that's uniting the world, united, brings you non-stop service from six U.S. cities to London's Heathrow and the land of poets. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. Come fly the friendly skies. When regular drills hold you back, send in the new Ranger cordless drill from Black & Decker. 
It goes anywhere to handle all the tough jobs. No strings attached. The new Ranger Cordless Drill. A powerful gift idea from Black & Decker. Thank you, Doctor. I'm not a real doctor. But if I were, I'd recommend ligament for occasional muscle pain. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. By United. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Black & Decker, the source of powerful gift ideas. Rick Venturi has decided to go for the touchdown after all on fourth and goal from the four-yard line. And Walt Corey, the Bills defensive coordinator, trying to come up with something to stop him on fourth and goal. Well, chewing on his swizzle stick. And the Colts may not expect too much the worst in the NFL in goal to go situation. Jeff Jordan has already set a single-season completion record for this club. Movement on the line, and it looked like Brian Blados got out of there early. Blados picked up on waivers after he was cut by Cincinnati. Ball start prior to the snap. Number 63 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. It's so hard for them to have any continuity on the line. See that number seven on the back of Blados' helmet? Of course, you know he was a Cincinnati Bengal. That's for Boomer Esiason. We saw Boomer Esiason That's wear right. it on his. And um, he feels the same way. Uh, two very, very good friends. Didn't want to leave necessarily, but had to. But it's their way of acknowledging one another. Now fourth and goal from the nine. Give a little more room. blitzing Kirby Jackson intended for Bill Brooks but Jackson who had the sack earlier came hard on the blitz and Jim Ursay the general manager watches another failed offensive opportunity you can teach your kids the fun of football from the right techniques to the right attitude with the help of a great coach and ESPN home video Michigan football coach Bo Schembechler teaches safe and fun basics of football from offense to defense and practice drills. A free phone call gets you started. Are we ready, man? Good. All right. Now, set your feet, set your feet. Step in the ground. Hey, that was good. Teaching Kids Football is just one of the many Teaching Kids videos available from ESPN, all featuring proven methods from famous coaches. To order Teaching Kids Football for just $29.95, call 1-800-841-8900. Ask the operator about our other Teaching Kids videos and save $5 when you order two. You'll also receive a free ESPN home video catalog. Teaching Kids Sports is Child's Play with ESPN Home Video. Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from ski's top teaching pros. Found at this all-new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Bruce Smith and the Buffalo defense have just turned back to Colts to preserve a 21-0 lead. You know, Mike, even though they got the five-yard penalty, I don't believe the pass route they had was going to get enough. You see Kirby Jackson come on the corner, but Mike Lotus, number 73, knocks the ball away. Even if it was caught by Billy Brooks, watch where the ball lands. I mean, it's, he's going to be on the five-yard line. I don't think they ever changed the play. And they had to get the ball into the end zone. Here's Kenneth Davis, first up the middle, good. Gives him a shot as he crosses the 20. Talk about time of possession. This is where the Buffalo Bills blow it out of whack. Before that snap of the ball, Buffalo had the ball 10 minutes and 2 seconds. Indy had it 10 minutes and 3. But it's 21-0. If you can do what they do in so few seconds, it doesn't matter. Davis burrows his way across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. 
The Therminator taking off his pads. Now the night's over. Either, 34 yards. Say, e either that or he's really a stud. Going to play without him. Well, that means he will be in second place behind Barry Sanders just ahead of Emmett Smith as they go to the final week. Remember, he barely lost the rushing title last year when they took him out of the final game. Baylor and A.G. on that last tackle. Bright young man who just had a brilliant career. What a weapon. Davis on the delay. Colts mess up the timing of that play. Travis Davis on the bottom of the pile, number 95. And a big hand from the Indianapolis crowd because they are going to force the first punt of the game. Chris Moyer, their punter, only in his second year out of Alabama. There's a guy who really doesn't get much credit because they, you focus on Norwood, what happened last year, but this guy's done a heck of a job for him. Played with a Montreal machine in the WLIF. 38-7 average. And an excellent net average of 36-3, a tribute to the special teams. And what? Just holy cow, all the way back to the 18 is for Dan. And tackled at the 18. Flag is down, however. Loss of two on the return after a 53-yard boomer. Steve Tasker, who else? The first man down on special teams for the Buffalo Bills, the Pro Bowler. Face mask penalty against Buffalo. Five-yard face mask, number 20 on the return. Five-yard penalty, first down, timeout. Tasker, the Pro Bowler on special teams, and we'll be back with a 21 nothing score in just a moment. This Christmas, Tandy Computers, some of the best-selling PC compatibles in America, are on sale at Radio Shack. Four complete systems with color monitors start at just $599.90. All come with 24 unique home organizer programs. The more powerful RLX system is the perfect home office machine. And with hard drive, it's just $1199.95. The Tandy 1000 family of computers, so easy to use, we guarantee success. Radio Shack, America's technology store. for my birthday. A whole weekend in the great outdoors without me. Here's to the great outdoors, men who understand, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. Mercedes. BMW. Lexus. Expensive cars with a life-saving luxury and airbag. Fortunately, there's also the Isuzu Stylus, the first import under $10,000 with a driver's side airbag standard. So you too can enjoy a lower cost of living. The Isuzu Stylus, there's no comparison. Hurry, your end factory to dealer incentives end December 31st. Whatever it takes, anabolic steroids enhancing strength, speed, looks. An NFL player tried suicide with his use discovered. The drugs made an Olympic giant. They are in our schools. Outside the lines, Tuesday the 17th. To say it has been all Buffalo would be an understatement. The Bills lead it 21 to nothing here at the Hoosier Dome. House of frustration indeed. One win, 13 losses, nine and a half points a game on offense. They have not won a game at home. 52,000 showed up anyway. Clark is ripped by Bruce Smith, who just took one arm and flipped it. Holy cow. Boy, does he take a corner hard. Woo! Wow. 52,000 on hand, only about 8,000 empty seats to the Hoosier Dome, a tribute to the fans of this franchise. The Budweiser storyline shows us that Jim Kelly has missed only one pass. That could have been caught. He has two touchdowns. Buffalo has rushed for 113 to 17. Thurman Thomas done for the night with an injured ankle. And the Bills have scored three out of four times. 
that's worse than the first time they played when they scored the first six times. Colts have improved. George, pump fake. Throws on the run, incomplete on the sideline. Being juggled, going out of bounds. Jesse Hester had his hands on it, couldn't hold it. There was a guy a couple years ago who was really out of football. Jesse Hester just really quit on himself. His last year with the Raiders, he told me, he said, you know, it got to a point where I didn't want him to throw me the football. So his brother put together a highlight film showing him some of the great catches that he made and it really rejuvenated him. Last year, over 50 catches. This year, over 50 catches. And he really appreciates the fact that he's playing pro ball. And his record and his numbers have shown it. Left the Raiders with a reputation of being a hard worker, better than average speed, but no hands. Certainly, he has overcome that. Third and 13 for Jeff George. Pally leaping players. And here's Cornelius Bennett getting the sack back at the four. Darrell Talley looked like Superman leaping into the backfield, and then Cornelius Bennett picked up where he left off and got the sack for a loss of 17. We saw Darrell Talley in the first quarter go after him. There's number 56. What? Shoom! I don't know if I can draw it as fast as he's going to get there. It's no contest. Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then, of course, Biscuit, Cornelius Bennett cleaning up for him. Ron Stark at the end line, punting out of the end zone. Clifford Hicks waits in Indianapolis territory. Wobbly kick this time, and Hicks fair catch to 42. Punt of 38 yards, no return. Earlier, we mentioned something about the uh, Colts draft history. There's Jim Mercer, the general manager, the son of the owner. And they have not had great success in the draft. 1980, they had the 5th and 24th selections in the first round. Got nothing out of it. 1981, the 12th and 18th. Donnell Thompson has had a good career, but not that kind of impact player that you would have thought. And then Johnny Cooks and Arch Schleister, that turned out to be a disaster. 83, they take Elway, but they can't sign him. We'll show you some more in a minute. Reed over the middle. Oh. Parade got there, put a helmet on him in a hurry. Here are the others. Leonard Coleman and Ron Solt. Solt turned out to be an all-pro, but they traded him. Dwayne Bickett, who's been a fine player ever since he's been here. John Han has never lived up to that reputation. Cornelius Bennett, they got a prize there, but they couldn't sign him either. He ends up in Buffalo. Davis dives forward to the 30. And when you have that many opportunities, that many chances to get impact players and guys who can really build your franchise, you have to look at the front office and not the coaching staff and say, hey, these guys are the ones that are making mistakes. This football team does not have a plan. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of been like, let's see if we can patch it and put it together. They haven't really come up with a plan, and I think that's a priority for Jim Ursa. He also mentioned to all the agents out there that there is a recession going on. <laughs> He's going to have two number ones, and keep that in mind. Well, one in 13 is about the worst recession you could have. Reed can't hold on. Baylor, nice job. Of course, then there was the Dickerson trade. And he's gained a lot of yards for them, but he has been such a problem for this franchise. Um, you know, but he in 1982, he acknowledged the fact that they drafted for need. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be the approach now. You're going to draft the best players on the board. And I think that if you're drafting athletes, it helps. And if the juniors come out the way they're projected to, he's going to get some fine players out of this draft. Edwards to the 24. That will be short of a first down. Our draft expert, Mel Kuyper, says these would be the top five draft picks. Steve Eppman, and this is uh, assuming that the juniors do come out, Bob Whitfield, the great left tackle for Stanford. Terrell Buckley, Desmond Howard, the Heisman winner, and Troy Vincent. You don't see a quarterback like Klingler in there, but I think he's got to be pretty close. Kelly with all the time read. Touchdown. This has turned into a shooting gallery. Four out of five possessions, they have scored touchdowns.
It's almost a shame they can't draft tomorrow and bring him in for the last week. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable how proficient this offense is. I mean, if you come up and try and stop the run, they're gonna, he's gonna find a seam. He looks off, looks to the left, look at the time. Nobody in his face. And it's a perfect throw. That's not real bad cover. No. It's not bad cover, but I mean, it's, when you're hot, you're hot. Norwood for the point answer. Got it. And that beautiful tight spiral. And Reed makes yet another touchdown grab, and the Bills lead it 28 0. Why will college basketball fans love ESPN Super Slams and Spectacular Plays and College Hoops Floops? Does that answer the question? Everyone has a dream, a vision deep inside. When I decide to follow up on an investing idea, I need a broker who's ready when I am. We make it easier to follow your own lead. I can call Schwab at any hour, nights or weekends, get the information I need, even place an order to trade. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. You'll see stars on the place where champions are made. Top rank box on ESPN. Don't miss the greatest hits of the 90s. It's a two-fisted top rank doubleheader. Buck Smith, who has more wins than anyone in the fight game today, faces Robert Wigila. And Rudy Zavala battles Tommy Valdez. Top rank boxing, Thursday night, live on ESPN. Buffalo in a romp with 4.47 to go first half. Jeff George being tended to on the sideline. They are working on his ankle. Coming up in the second half, joining us live, a prospective NFL owner, and in terms of yardage and several other things, the greatest running back who ever played the game, Walter Payton. He'll join us live in the third quarter. We hope you'll stay with us. Uh, several things to ask Sweetness about. I'll tell you, Sweetness, you know, we can rave about his athletic ability. He certainly was the best. But what a great class act he is as a person. Just going to say, if class were a qualifier to be an NFL owner, he'd have a franchise very soon. Galoiso has put three in the end zone. This time they'll be able to bring it out. Sammy Martin from a couple of yards deep. Has a hole. Martin to the 37, and the crowd finally has something to cheer about. Return of 39. Poor Sammy Martin. Uh, you know, Sammy Martin, he feels like he's been snake bit. Last year he was in New England when it was 1-15, and, and, and now he's here, and Mark Herman's going to take over for Jeff George. Now, he's had a lot more experience than Jeff George, and I, he'll be out there trying to read the defense a little better now. There's Cornelius Bennett. Brings down Jeff George, turned his ankle or hurt his foot on that play. This will only be the second snap that Mark Herman has taken this year. Clark. Pally stacks up the interference and gets help. Conlon is in on the stop. Claimed off waivers from the Rams. Rick Venturi said he wanted to shorten the game and try and run the football. His offense hadn't been on the field very much. And when the Bills throw up 28 points, I think it's going to be a short game as it is. And uh, that's what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and use up as much of that 45-second clock as they can. Herman, of course, was part of the John Elway trade with Chris Hinton in 84. Comes the blitz. Bennett doesn't get there, and Herman intended for Morasco. And Herman takes his first shot of the night. Well, that's the difference. The Bills get somebody close to open. It's a touchdown. Watch this, right part of your screen. Now, it, he's open. The ball just winds up being thrown behind him. Now, tight, well, tight ends, they're not the most 
agile of people when it comes to making adjustments on the ball. You pretty much have to put it exactly where you want it for them, which is right in their hands. Hey, that really wasn't a bad throw. No, it wasn't. I mean, when you hit the guy in the middle of the back and he doesn't turn around. It wasn't, you're right. Working on George. At a left elbow pad. Comes another blitz. Callie doesn't get there, but he made Herman throw it well before he wanted to. And the Colts are three plays and out again. been that kind of year since Rick Venturi replaced Ron Meyer. And I'll tell you, it's a, there's a credit to Venturi. A lot of teams that are struggling, they fold their tents up. Yep. And it's like they're not going to... This team has not folded their tents. Somehow he's got them to come out here and at least give a, a good effort. If the score doesn't indicate, at least the guys are trying. Well, he's been around here for a decade as an assistant coach, and uh, the defensive players certainly well aware of it. But some hits on the run. Flip the tackle. There is a flag down. Hicks tackled at the 33. Return of 10 after a low 37-yard punt. And it will be holding against the Colts. Marv Levy, just another day at the office, 28 in the first half. Number 37 on the kicking team. Fire the kick. Penalty is declined. First down. Well, declined the penalty, so taking over from the 33-yard line. We invite you to watch two very special shows on Tuesday, two shows that you and your kids should watch. First, Dick Vitale special, The Game of Life. That starts at 9.30 Eastern. Dick talking to some of the best uh, young college basketball, high school basketball players in the country. Then Outside the Lines, the Emmy Award-winning show with a look at steroids in sports. If you're concerned about the issues in sports, those are two very important shows for you to watch. We hope you'll be with us on Tuesday night on ESPN. Oh, baby, oh, baby. Dick gets Dick into oh, this Dick, oh, baby. One. Well, Dick, he, Dick gets into everything, and that makes him so much fun to listen to. But if you haven't seen if you haven't seen Dick get into something, let's just see this. You just have to wonder how long Jim Kelly will play in this game. There's a busted play, and Kelly will protect himself and go down. One more of those, and we'll see Frank Wright. I don't even think he's going to take one of those. I, I would be rest of pretty sure that Kelly's probably not going to play the second half. But you got to be careful. Two things Marv has to be careful of in a game like this. Number one, of course, is injuries to key players. Doesn't want to lose them this late in the season. Secondly, you don't want to let down, even though the score is a little bit out of hand, because that's when you can get hurt. We asked him, Kelly, last night if he had any personal goals, and uh, he said the Super Bowl was a little cloudy. He said, well, I'd like to get 4,000 yards. He needs 275 in the next two games. Kenneth Davis, who has filled in nicely for the inch of Thurman Thomas. We've got a couple after the 32. Kelly has thrown for 119 yards tonight. So he's nearly halfway there and three touchdowns. Looking at a Pro Bowl quarterback just having another great season. John Hand hit him, got away, and then he's buried back at the 25. The Colts defense certainly hasn't quit. Shane Curry will get credit for the sack. The rookie out of Miami. Another one of those guys without a lot of... Uh, technique ex experience you just say sick them well you know a lot of the guys out of miami has such great athletes that you just try and line them up and say go get them and then you get to the pros and they find out there everybody up here is a great athlete and the way you get good up here is through techniques and study chris moore will punt again beautiful kick drives the dance back to the 20. trying to get to the picket line on the right side Flag is down, and so is for Dan at the 37-yard line. An 18-yard, very pretty return after another beautiful punt, 56 yards. But this one will come back a few yards. Flag down right when the ball was kicked, and then another one down the field on the return. Probably going to be two fouls. I'm going to guess they'll be offsetting. Let's do it over. We have two fouls on the play, two fouls. Holding on the kicking team, illegal block, number 56 on the return. The penalty's offset, will re-kick. 
Let's do it over. You're on a roll. You know, we talked about Steve Tasker and about how great a special teams player he is. Here's it. He's always seeming to, seemingly to be the first guy down. Now watch this. Okay, he doesn't make the play. His clearance. Aha! I know where you're going. Hold it. Don't go over there. Come here. Wait a second. Watch this. Right part of your screen. Who's there? Steve Tasker. He's in there somewhere. There's two guys. For Dan, of course, last year was a Pro Bowl return man. Steve Tasker. Just a consensus Pro Bowl special team player. Now he's got to do it all over again. Great way to get to Honolulu. Tasker lining up on the outside to the far side being double teamed in Verdan, who was the Colts all-time punt return leader. This one went above the rim of the stadium, and Verdan with a fair catch to 24. Chris Moore just killed it again. 51 yards, no return. The wingmen on punt coverage. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. They want to run you so far. Matter of fact, they're going to send him over and let him visit with the coach. Look out, Marv. Marv was a special teams coach. <laughs> Steve, you got to go. You got to go pick him up. It's getting too involved in the work. Look at this. Look out, coach. Now, when a coach gets now, he <laughs> he wants to make sure everybody's healthy for the playoffs. Now, does he go to the locker room at halftime or what? Oh yeah, he's standing there going, "Sheesh." Okay. Colts take over at the 24. Ken Clark, who has run very hard tonight. Brought down by Mike Lotus, the middle guard. And we have reached the two-minute warning. It's 28-0 Buffalo. Looking good, get into Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. You if you're trying to decide between a roomy Isuzu Trooper with incredible cargo space and a roomy Isuzu Rodeo with incredible passenger space, take your time. After all, at these prices, you can afford to be choosy. Isuzu, there's no comparison. Hurry, you're in factory to dealer incentives end December 31st. McDonald's welcomes you to Neverland from Steven Spielberg's new movie, Hook, where you'll find the Never Tree and where there's... Never food! Never food! There's never food. No! So in the spirit of the season, McDonald's is offering something special. McDonald's gift certificates in five dollar books. Good for everyone's favorite food. And they all ate happily ever after. 157 to go in the half. 28-0. Buffalo over Indianapolis. And the Colts communication system having something of a problem. This looks like Christmas tree lights, doesn't it? <laughs> String him out in your living room. No, wait, this is the offensive boot? No, it's the defense. No, she's I don't He may know. have Formosa with that <laughs> setup. Coming up at halftime, the fastest three minutes in television. And Beating. we'll take a look. Yeah, take a look at the uh, playoffs and the way they stack up right now. Joe back with the first half analysis. Injury report on Marv Levy, shaken up, still able to coach. Been laughing most of the time. Tasker isn't laughing. That can get you in a doghouse. He's, dog he's hiding. Yeah. Clark and Tim Manoa are the backs. If you join this late, Eric Dickerson is out with the flu. Mark Herman throws complete to Brooks. Odoms wraps him up the 45-yard line. Jeff George is out, and that looks like he's done for the night. Big ice bag on the elbow. Seven out of 11, 83 yards. More like it's on his forearm than his elbow, but it's uh, you know, so bulky you can't tell. In a lot of instances, there's a burst of sack there, and sometimes if you hit the turf with it, it bursts and just swells up. They want to keep it iced and, and pressure on it. 
Herman with a quick out, lost the handle on the football, and he's sacked. From behind, Leon Seals will get the sack. That shouldn't be a sack. It should be an incompleted pass because he brings his arm forward. The ball slips out of his hands. It shouldn't be a sack. It should be an incompletion. I didn't think he was trying to throw the ball. I thought he was trying to pull it back down. I think he was trying to throw a pump. Watch this. He goes back, brings his arm forward. He loses the ball. That's considered, a, that's considered in my opinion, incomplete pass. Well, that's what they'll rule it as they mark it at the 45. Clark, a couple. Tally and Bennett wait for him. This is a great crew of linebackers with Bennett, Conlon, Tally, Carlton Bailey, and Ray Bentley alternate at the other the inside linebacker spot. And boy, they, they are the guys who love the fact that Wright and Smith are back. Herman over the middle, complete to Jesse Hester. Flips a couple of tackles, got by Leonard Smith. Kelso runs him out of bounds and not until he reaches the 30. Gain of 23. 30 straight games that Jesse Hester has caught a pass for this club. There's a nice piece of thinking on your feet. He knows he wants to try and get to the first down, but still in the process, pick up as many yards as he can. Mark Herman hanging tough in the pocket. He sits down in the zone, slips the tackle of Tally, and just continues to work his way out of bounds. Another completion down to the 26-yard line. That one was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It was. Kirby Jackson made the tackle as Darvell Huffman got it. Clock running down to 20, and the Colts finally stop it at 21. That's their second timeout. But they lost about 10 or 11 seconds on the play before they got the time. Now, when you're in this situation, you do not expect a lot of things to go right. Well, you know, the thing is, Mike, is I don't care whether you're... I was on a 6-10 and 10 football team. You play 16 games. If you don't have any postseason play, okay. But now what you got, you really got to concentrate. It's not easy. Nobody right. Said it, but you're still a professional. You still run the game like a professional because mm -hmm. it only makes you better for next year. Oh, I agree with you. It just doesn't seem to work out that way with 1-13 and 13 teams. Jeff George, whose night appears to be done. There's the uh, ice on his elbow and forearm. Take a look at the rushing leaders in the NFL, and we've had some guys who are having tremendous seasons. Barry Sanders, with his effort today, is up to 1440. Thurman Thomas of Buffalo, injured and out, will not play anymore. Could have easily gone back into the number one spot. We'll have to try to do it next week when he and Sanders go head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Stanley Smith. Johnson and all the Dallas Cowboys for their effort today. Herman for Hester, underthrown and intercepted by Odoms. No whistle, and Odoms still running it back out to the nine-yard line. Hester had a step on Odoms, it appeared, but the ball just hung up there, and Nate Odoms gets his fifth interception, the 12th of his career. And Odoms is injured. Left part of your screen just doesn't get enough air under the ball. He's trying to throw a corner against the zone, and it's badly underthrown. Now Odoms manages to struggle away from Hester. Gets pounded by Brian Baldinger. Does what every defensive back is taught to do, go up and catch the ball at its highest point. Probably watched that film of Deion Sanders a little bit today. You see, it looked like the right ankle got caught under there. And fans can be cruel when you're 1-13. This is where they want to send some of the Colts, if not most. And when you're 1-13, even the blind dates aren't very good. <laughs> this one guy that's not laughing, but I thought that was great. <laughs> Oh, we've all had them. <laughs> and now the Buffalo Bills will kneel down and leave well enough alone, leading 
nothing. That's the end of the first half in Indianapolis. It's been lovely if you're a Buffalo fan, not so for the Colts. Let's join Chris Berman. So the 28.